Hello friends, welcome to our next wonderful Star Wars Galaxies episode. Today we are going to start our artisan adventure. And the first thing we're going to do is withdraw some money. I think a hundred thousand should be enough to start. And now we will go looking for a place to put our house. I figure we'll go outside of Moss Isley, find a remote area, and throw down. And then we can get started moving things from our other house to this one. This will also be a fine adventure in house placement. I think I need to update the responsiveness. So, this is also going to be a test. I'm going to see if my laptop can handle this because I'm my frame of view is very short. And it seems to be doing better today after going through and getting updated and everything. But if it is not better shortly, I will probably run back to Windows 7 and all it's good. Because I have a feeling Windows 7 would be better. Less resources, more ability to stream a little easier. I can't believe I haven't entered the town yet. Tombstone shrink that much? I don't think so. Wow, it must have. But we definitely can't become part of a town. There's two towns here, so... It's usually... Look at all those houses. It's usually... Some places... There was... Well, at least there used to be. Now it's starting to look like low-rent housing over here. But there were a lot of open areas over here. quite some time ago. Those may have all been gathered up by now. And we have quite the house to throw down, so we need a little room. Okay. Yes, it looks like most of this has been absorbed. But I know... This is fairly open here. Let's see what this looks like. Where is my deed? there but I think that's gonna run us into the point where we can't do anything else so let's keep going so I don't want to run into where all these things are because if we decide to put down any mining stuff and we will we cannot
go any further. So we have to go further out. Okay. Well, this would be handy. Just put it next to my other house. Alright. I wonder if I can. There's my house. So technically, I could just throw it right here. Just like... And here's a new house. It's a little place, you know. Just something to tide us over for a little bit. There's the guild management. I haven't been one of these actually as a house manager in a while. I think it's on the other side. turn off the red view. Is it in here? Yes. There it is. Okay. Structure management. Okay. So let's do a status. It is private. Okay. So... to pay maintenance and let's let's throw 50k in there and find out what it does that'll hold us for a month 70k all this for a month which is fine with me privacy the building is now public so people can come in and I'm not quite sure what we should name our little house so if you've never been in a generic guild hall that is empty I'll take you on a little tour so here you have the foyer the entryway here where you come in and would do some entertaining or set things up there. This is the little back room, which should probably be if you were having some kind of celebration out here. This would be where the food would be prepared and stored and brought out. But I'm thinking like using it like a dining room or something. And then you have your entry here. your side areas over here so we've got this little room over here and there's an another room on the other side that is just the same and you can go up the stairs and you have this nice room with skylights you have this outdoor area here and then you go down on this side It's a mirror of the other side. So, from here, we can get in the elevator, and we can go down, and this takes us down a level, and there's a little alcove slash dungeon down here. And most people have been in these. 
It's not news. This reminds me of the holodeck on Star Trek. And then I think this is as far down. Can we go down one more? No, that's it. All right. I guess I have to be in the elevator to go up. There we go. And now we are up. So yesterday, I took, I did a little shopping. Now, all things considered, I think what I want to do is I want to use the downstairs for storage. So we're going to want to be down there. So this, this can be our storage, and we'll use the, the holodeck room for storage here. So I bought the Artisan 44X grind kit and the Novice Box grind kit. So all we have to do is Stand near a stuck structure crash station for step three. Oh, okay. Um, so we need to make a nine mineral survey tools. And we're going to need some generic crafting tools. So we will put that there. I don't know what the lead time is on these. Just chemical, clothes, food, misc. We need... I do not need help. Mineral survey tools. Okay, and we're going to look in our artisan kit. And what do we use? Guessing we use the steel. I don't remember. And can we do? I do not need help. Okay. So we step through the first steps. Can't experiment. And we want to do it in practice mode so we don't end up with 50 billion mineral survey devices. And now this is where confirm crafting options actions is going to come in handy. Okay, so we got that. So let's get our skills up. There's our skills. And I think we want to go up the tinkering tree first. I haven't done this in a very long time. Yep, craft tools. Guessing generic craft tools. No, it 
Doesn't say. Yeah, it just says craft tools. I think they all take the same. That got us 50 experience. 58. Okay. So here's where the fun comes in. didn't work out very well for me yesterday so we'll see how it does today Works awesome. If it doesn't work, well, not what I wanted. I'd like to maintain that window. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work the way I want. Okay. So we're going to blank the screen for a second so that I can get into the other account and then I'll be right back. I need to get it switched over to the other window. Don't be disturbed by the lack of anything being displayed. There we go. Now I can put it back. Because now it doesn't matter. But anyway, now we will persist. Okay. There is a significant delay, so let's let's knock another one of these out of here. And honestly, it doesn't really matter if we run out of something. I've got plenty of everything, so. We can do another one. Might as well get them all out. I don't know that I'll be able to run them all, but I've been known to do so. And then that happens. Not done this in a while. Okay. Now this is why I logged in my other character. And she's quite a ways away.
So let's move. This is going to be a little disjointed, I'm sure. Okay, there's the bank. Yeah, good. Exactly where I want it to be. At least we're not that far away. And I will post the waypoint for the uh, where the house is located when this episode is over. And this character has a number of skills. Skills that I might find to be useful. That will save me quite a significant bit on training. Can't really complain about free training. I may have to train one box. I, I don't think I can go 444. Because I don't have it. And I think you have to. But I think I had it and I dropped it. Okay, not helpful. And so much of this game is transporting yourself around. But I have three artisan characters. So it's going to be a trio of crafters in one area. And once I move all three of them there, and I'll move the other third one in there later, and that third one is actually an architect so I can make furniture, then I will not have to move them again. I can switch freely between them to do what I want to do. And there's our house in the distance. Tiny little thing it is. Okay. Let's see if that Mon Cal is still out there. Serving. Yep. Apparently AFK surveying is the uh, news of the day. So let's go in here. Let's grab all of these. If we're going in, we might as well take all of our stations with us. And I'm going to have to remake those anyway, so it's not a horrible thing if they get lost. Okay. And now we go downstairs. here and we invite our other character to a group we accept and then we do what we do each uh, which one is it engineering I think yeah, engineering one And we accept. Bam! Engineering one. Okay. So, before I forget, we're going to go upstairs and add this character to the access list. And these are the trials and tribulations of owning a house. Oop, did not want to go outside. Okay, so we want to 
structure permission administrators list. There we go. Now my character is in the admin list and can do some pretty interesting things. We'll go over those later. Right now, we have some crafting tools to make. So we'll go to our generic crafting tool. And we have crafting tools. So they all take varying amounts of metal in that impacts how much experience we get for it. I did not want to do that. I wanted to do open a new window. Move it over. Now I want to take this aluminum, this aluminum, this ore, and that petrochem and move it over. So now it's in our inventory and it doesn't we don't have to keep digging to it. So we're going to make weapon droid and complex generic item crafting tools, which is a state basic everything tool. All right. And let's make sure we're in practice mode. Once you get a rhythm into this, it really just goes. But you got to be careful. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five generic crafting tools. So we have to do this, what, ten times? Yep, yeah, says 60. Let's get our skills up so we can see where we're at. Because we need to get to the point where we are making... Wind generators. And when do those come? Engineering 3. So we will do... Basically this tree, and I think I want to become a master artisan. I would like to have one master artisan so I can make some of these items, speeder bikes and things like that, and vehicle customization kits. Because none of my other artisans are master artisan. So I think we'll do that. We'll become a master artisan. Just going to take a little bit, but that's okay. We've got time, and I've got nothing but... And yeah, if I put my mind to it and I wanted to just blow through money, I could uh, most assuredly master whatever I wanted to master extremely quickly. Let those run out. This is this is pretty much what being an artisan is about. Making things, and if the grind of making things bothers you, then I'm sorry to say that the process of making things and being an artisan is probably going to bother you. It's it's this is what you do. It's like if fighting things makes you bored, then. Having a combat character is, is going to be horrible for you. <laughs> We're going to learn engineering too. 
Now, if we were uh, having to go to the trainer every time and learn a skill, it would cost us, uh, I think it's 1,000, 100, I think this is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 for a tier 4 skill, and then 5,000 for Master Artisan. So we would have to continuously run to a trainer and get trained. Uh, I don't see where we're going to need domestic arts. I don't see where we're going to really need merchant too much, except not access fees, not premium auctions, but this gives us a vendor. So does that. But we're going to be master artist in any way, so, but these are not going to be so surveying would be important. So I don't have a good surveyor yet. And that would uh, come in quite handy. Let's do another round. Now, on live, I mastered all the pretty much all the crafting professions in one or two days. Mastered them, dropped them, started over, did it again. Unfortunately, you can't be everything in Star Wars Galaxies because you have a limited number of skill points. And we have 79 available. Before we have to start dropping Bioengineer and Pistolier to just become an artisan. And this will actually put me in a position where... I have everything but shipwright. And I'm okay with that. I don't need to pocket a shipwright. Because it seems like it's going to be a rather pointless skill to raise right now. All right. We're rapidly getting up our way to engineering three. And. Engineering, or the first tier takes 500 points to learn. The second one takes 1,000 skill points. The third one takes 3,000. And the top one takes 6. And the Master Artisan takes a pretty significant amount. As well as the novice boxes for what we're going to do, which is Weaponsmith and Armorsmith. And benef on the other benefit is we've got quite a lot of skills that my other character can teach. So that's very useful. And I would like to master artisan today. Or at least get three, four, four artisan, which won't take long. And then I'll work on survey. We'll, we'll do surveying and we'll have some discussions and talk about some stuff while surveying. It'll give us time to, sur to talk about how to survey and how to pick stuff up and master surveying. Because th this takes certain types of experience. So this takes general crafting experience, and this takes survey experience. You could tell that by hovering over it. Now, as an artisan in Star Wars Galaxies, nothing you make is any good until you are a master. And even then, the stuff you make may not be very good. Because if you don't know how to use the average values of the resources that you're working with, you are not going to come up with good products. And we'll get there. 
I'm using crap grind resources right now. I do have a significant amount of good resources. I'll be moving those over later. I don't think you want to watch me move. But this goes way faster. Once you can make wind generators, it just flies by. Now, making things as a chef to sell is going to be interesting, because I can use some of this flora and whatnot to make some food. And hopefully I've got something of good quality that I can make and sell. And of course, you're all welcome, if you play, to drop by anytime. I'll be doing some decorating setting things up getting some of this stuff out here and putting up vendors uh, right now I'm just trying to get this character some skill today because I'd really like to see some progress in this and then as a master artist and you can actually make some useful things I mean some of the stuff is useful made in a factory and we'll cover factories too you have to understand how to use your character slots, how to use your factories, and how to utilize resources. So we'll cover all of that as we go. Because this is all part of being an artisan of any type. You need to know if you're going to buy all your resources or if you're just going to harvest them yourself, if you're going to buy your factory created parts, or if you're going to make and sell factory created parts. It's all a part of making choices because either one is viable and it's really a matter of how much your time is worth. I can run to South Isley, go to the resource vendors and buy resources and make things with them. And then I can mark them up and I can make money. Or I can harvest the resources myself and only have to pay for power. Or I can harvest power and not have to worry about it at all. Almost there. Now, a long time ago, people calculated the gains, the loss versus gains routine of all the items and found the best, most efficient things to craft to make those levels. And now we are in the zone to make wind generators. So we will go down and find is it hard deeds I think uh, installations wind power generator wind power generators take a lot of material but whereas this was granting 68 points of experience the wind power generator grants 446 So as you can see, this makes a huge difference. Now remember, you can only store 2,000 experience, or your, you can only store the next level of experience plus, well, two times, basically. So if we get enough to get Engineering 4, we can train a bunch of things, but we can't, we need, what, 5,000 for Engineering 4, I think? 6,000. So we can get 12,000 experience. I think it runs out though at 6. Some of them do. And uh, you just don't get experience anymore. And it's hard to catch. 
So it's really easy to miss the fact that you're making things and wasting resources and not getting any experience for it. Sure, it's great to train immediately. But why train immediately when we can just get a bunch of experience? Train a bunch of boxes at once. Make you guys seasick from switching back and forth between my characters. Which tomorrow I hopefully will have another laptop, access to another laptop to uh, not have to flip back and forth on the same screen. I had actually intended to do that, but I was actually checking on some performance problems I was having and totally forgot and wanted to get started on this and then I started recording and, well, you know the rest. You were here. So I guess I should go over our goal. So what is our goal? Our goal isn't to make a huge amount of money. My goal is to show you what it's like being an artisan. What you have to do, what's expected of you to do, and uh, what are some good ways to go about doing artisan-y things that get you progress and get you to the point where you are making a profit. Um, how do you price your items? There's a lot of different factors you can consider. Okay, so now we've got 6,278. Let's, let's do two more. So if we do two more, if it'll let us, then we can train another box. See how much quicker this goes? All right, so that's 7,000. So let's learn uh, domestic arts. And we can learn domestic arts too. Now these are the same skills a trainer would, would charge us for. And now we can get domestic arts three. Now we can get business one. Okay, so that put us in. We can get business two as well. Awesome. Cool. So now we can get, I think I have to get domestic arts four. So we'll do that. business three as well I guess we could get and then we'd have to get engineering four but we will have to pay to train that one and I will have to go to a trainer because my tailor does not have that skill my architect does so if I really wanted to just get the points, then I could train it with my architect. I may be able to do that later. Conserving money any way you can as an artisan is a good and viable move. You don't want to spend money you don't have to spend. Now, I'm wasting a ton of money just practicing making things. And that seems really horrible. Because they're getting no return on this whatsoever. I'm just throwing... I think it's 30,000 credits away. But the future gains that I'll have from doing this will pay off. So think of this as going to college. And 
I'm paying my tuition now. So there's a return on it. I will see this come back because now I can make new things. And you do have to, as they say, spend money to make money. However, none of this is actually profit in any way because I'm not even getting a product. If I wanted to get a product, I would have to experiment on it. And in order to experiment on it, what is that going to be? Six and three. Let's see if I can get to nine. So if I wanted to experiment on it, it's actually going to take me longer because I have to actually experiment. I have to decide where I want to allocate my points, how far I want my points to allocate each time. And every time I'm going up in a skill, I get more points. So it's not conducive to practicing. The sad part is, you can't make speeder bikes uh, until Master Artisan, which would be really handy to make to get there. I kind of wish you could make like a cheap scooter. Like a one-person deal, so that you'd have something else to practice on. Good. So now we just need business four. And that's 6,000. And we need engineering four, which is 12. Which honestly is not that far out of the realm of what we're going to be doing. on trucking. Now, survey, we actually have to go out and sample things to get experience, and I'm going to do that in a different video, because right now, I'm actually a little bit tired from work. And if you make me sit in one place and do nothing other than just click a button, I'm going to fall asleep. And that's not as entertaining as it sounds. Because honestly, it's just going to be downright boring. And I'm very much looking forward to getting my new PC put together. However, I still need to get the processor in. So once we do that, we can finish it up. At least in its basic form. So this isn't even its final form. Okay, and now we... And I'm hoping this weekend I have more time to devote to setting up the house, and setting up vendors, and making it entertaining to visit as well as it is to watch. Because right now it is kind of plain. I'm hiding in the basement. I'm okay with hiding in the basement, because that's kind of going to be the workspace. But we need to be out and about greeting people, being friendly. There's um system for the mer merchants that can make the uh, mer that make their vendors talk and everybody sees that but what kind of impression would you get if you walked into a shop and that person was there and they were talking to you and inviting you then themselves and welcoming you and some people probably wouldn't like that very much some people might but it does add a nice touch it's like what the entertainers used to be where they involved the public and were actually people who conversed and just talked and listened to your stories and did dancing and music and then it turned into a bunch of bots. I mean, Doctor had an, a very interesting 
opportunity for role play if you wanted it, where you could be concerned about people and do things and now it's mostly bots. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and train business four so I don't run over it. And I'm gonna switch back because I think I actually just hit the cap on what I can teach. Yes. So that is where I stand on that. Now I'm going to show you something really cool that merchants can do, especially a master merchant. So I can make a lot of different vendors, and we're going to work on the vendors tomorrow and through the weekend. But as a rather generic house, it has this generic shield name on it. However, as a regular person, you can't do anything about that. That is what you get. And you have to like it. However, as a master merchant, I have five choices of signs I can put out. So, I have that. Now that one doesn't stand out very well. And now that I'm seeing it, I probably don't want that one. Because I like just kind of the same you have to run out to look at it. I guess I could park my other character out there and And I get this one. I forget which one I have. That one. Now this one is a little easier to see. Even though the fourth one is higher, this one's easier to see. So you can actually see at somebody's house. I wish it sat out further. It would be very helpful if it sat here. But that would interfere with the stairs. So, as a merchant, I have some other options when I look at the house terminal. I have access fees that I can set. So I can set a fee as to how much it would ch cost you to get into the building. I can create a vendor. And I can create a terminal, a droid, or an NPC. And then the standard stuff. But we're going to worry about vendors tomorrow and through the weekend and decorating. But for now, we're going to do this. So this is going to be our secret lab down here. We're going to So this is the easiest way in Star Wars Galaxies to drop furniture. Go to where you want it, drop it. 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 And then you have options. So we want to to move it forward. All right, let's do this. Rotate it. Okay, and then we want to. No, the rest of it's okay. 
So we got our stations in, our crafting stations. So now we have the ability to make more things. And this will come into play later. We got clothing and armor, food and chemical, structures and furniture, and weapons, droid, and general items. All right. So I'm going to take this character back upstairs and park this one. And we're going to park right in the middle and sign out. And we're just going to do a disconnect. And I think this is the character we want. Now, this character is a number of things. Hey, the Mon Cal left. Hopefully we didn't, our house didn't need him. So this character is a... Is this droid engineer? Architect. Which means this character has engineering four. So we can get that skill done without having to pay for it. Okay, so we need to switch back and we will. Um, Finish up Engineering 4 while we wait for our group to drop. Shouldn't take too long. Looks like our group is not going to fade before we get the skill. So now we can get engineering four. So let's leave the group. Let's teach engineering four. Bam, four, 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 artisan. Pretty cool, huh? So now we have we just have to do the survey line to get to Master Artisan. So we're going to become a Weaponsmith and an Armorsmith. A Weaponsmith, Novice Weaponsmith, requires 21,000 points of general crafting experience. And this Novice box is... Guess what? more wind generators. So we can do this. Move this out here. And we can rename this one to Crafting Tools. We can put that in there. And then we can go over here and 
drop it. And it'll appear there. So now, when we open it, there's our crafting tools. Now we can put these crafting tools in there, the ones we're not using, so that all of our characters have access to these crafting tools. Now I'm going to log out my architect, because she really doesn't have much to do right now. But before I do, I need to add her as part of the house. So, let's go upstairs again. And it's really key that the architects, or the uh, crafters, are admins in the house. So that they can put vendors down and do things of that nature. So let's add... I don't need help. Okay, and now my other character is an admin and can place vendors and whatnot in the house and decorate, which is really important that your architect has the ability to decorate your house. Otherwise, you're kind of wasting your time. Okay, now let's take a look at her inventory really quick. I have a number of items in my inventory. So, we will definitely be using some of these. And there's more generic crafting tools. So I can actually open this and drop these in there. So now I've got 10 spare crafting tools if somebody needs them. And by doing that, I've tested that she actually has the ability to do that. So, we are done with our artisan. So we're going to exit the game. And we are going to get that novice box. So here's our skills. And we're going to become a weaponsmith. So we'll leave weaponsmith up here. 21,000. And... Any of this the same? Yep, it is. All right. Same deal as last time. Let's see what one cycle of of these does for experience. Should be at least a couple thousand. So one run through of our five gives us 2,000 something-ish experience. So we are basically going to have to do this 10 times. That's not horrible. Now if we wanted to become a uh, armorsmith, same deal. But we need 16,800 points of a general crafting experience. So we actually need less to become an armorsmith than to become a weaponsmith. Which is interesting because we should actually have enough to get really close to both. And if not, I've got spare craps laying around I can make things from. They work just fine. All right, so here's the problem. We didn't have enough of that resource. So we're going to have to drop it out. So 
So this steel, we have, don't have enough to do anything with. We're going to put it in there. And the reason we're going to put it in there is because you can't have a partially filled slot. They all have to be filled completely. You need 145 for this one, 45 of this one. You can't split them. I wish you could. So some of these scraps could get used up, but that's not the way it works. Basically, I just want to finish this in as much as I can because I would like to be able to go to town and just train both skills at novice. And then we can start working towards Master Weaponsmith, Master Armor. And I have not actually done an Armor Smith as a played profession. I mastered the class, but I haven't really worked Armorsmith much. So I'm really curious on how that works all around. I'm sure it's the same as any other crafting class, but I kind of want to give it a whirl. See what happens. Okay. And blah, blah, blah. Where's that put us? 9,000. Really, we could uh, just keep doing this until we can't gain any more experience from it see how that ends up. Just gotta make sure you keep an eye on this so it tells you what you're getting. Because eventually it's going to stop. And at that point we will have to do something Let's go back so we're actually focused on Weaponsmith because I want to make sure I get the minimum for Weaponsmith. The Weaponsmith is 21,000. So all told, we're going to need about 37,000. I don't know that we're going to get there with what we have. We might. Because these usually give you a bit extra to kind of hold you over in case you screw up or something bugs out. So maybe with the extra, it's going to be enough to take us somewhere. And you can buy these crafting kits at pretty much any big mall. Just make sure you don't pay too much for them. The uh, Artisan one was 25,000 credits, and the Novice Box one was also 25,000 credits. So 50,000 credits and we get... All of Artisan done, except for scanning and surveying. And almost, I'm guessing, Novice Weaponsmith and Novice Armorsmith for 50k. You really, you could beat it, but you'd actually have to go buy these resources at a, a very bulk dealer. Like a 1 or a 2 CPU credit per unit deal and they would have to be utter crap these aren't bad I could definitely have worse in a kit especially for a grinding kit getting closer Next round, we'll be able to be an armor smith. And then we just need to wrangle our way up to uh, 
weaponsmith basically so we're gonna do we're gonna do weaponsmith first either way because there's just more resources involved in being a weaponsmith so if we uh, have that or at least that far and I have done weaponsmith before I was actually a very good weaponsmith I did get us armor smith already. So now we're just working on weaponsmith. If you're looking for a really cheap way to price things, if you figure if you buy all your resources for two credits per unit, you can add up how many units of material each thing takes, multiply it by two, take out any factory time that you had to spend or extra parts you had to add in, and then you know what you paid to make it. Everything above that is where you start to get profit once you take out your operating expenses and whatnot. So you don't want to sell things at profit, at like cost to anybody because they'll expect it with everything. It's just nature that people assume that if you did it once, you're going to continue to do it. And it's harder to go back from that and start charging full price unless it's something very rare. And we got our weaponsmith experience. We're going to keep going. I'm just going to use these up and I'm going to find out where where this rabbit hole ends. Um, just watching our experience go and when it stops coming I know we can't go any further until we train. And that's where we're going to have to go do something about it. Which is probably actually going to be tomorrow. I know exactly where the trainer is, and they're not in a very good spot to go to. They're in the Commerce Guild in Moss Eisley. Okay, it's 20, almost 24,000. Making progress. What did I say we needed? It's 21. And let's say 17. So 28,000. 38,000. So if we can get this to 38,000, we can train them both in one shot. I don't know that we're going to, but we might get close. getting experience. There's 26, so less than, a little more than 10,000. Like 12,000 experience more. So not horrible. Is that like six times through? I think you could stick around for six times through this. There we go. And this will tell me when we're done how 
how far we made it. Now technically we could bump these up pretty high and then as we make speeders and whatnot we could use that experience to do it because it is general crafting experience it's not anything horrible and we will make things so eventually we would have gotten the box anyway but this way we get it and we're done with it so once you learn these unless you drop the skill it doesn't go away it doesn't decay so if you don't make any houses for a while as an architect you don't forget how to be an architect Okay, we just passed the droid engineer level. This is what we need to start watching to make sure we're still getting experience. And I'm watching that here. If that line does not appear, then we need to stop. there. Still getting experience. Yeah, I can tell I'm tired because I couldn't remember what goes in that box. And that's almost 33,000 experience. So you gotta make like 10 more of these. And that gets us novice architect. If we would have wanted it. But I already have an architect, so I don't need another one. We are running very low on resources. However, I think we have enough. Uh, doesn't unload very well. See, the problem is these are regulated based on how much we can use. It should average out correctly to where we don't have extra but we don't run out unless you start using them in the wrong spots there we go take it to 38 just to be sure Maybe 39, if we can push it. So if we get to 39, there's no question we can do both. We won't have to go make things in front of the trainer just to train. two more after this and then we're done for the day and this was a simple day where we did not do much so tomorrow I have more opportunity to be prepared we can't do this one damn all right that was worth a shot that got us 39,000 anyway so that is both of our skills trainable. So that's awesome. All right, so I'm gonna go back upstairs. And I'm gonna go to the middle of the room.
and I am going to sign out for the night because I'm very very tired so tomorrow we'll come back and we'll do more configuration and more I'll do the training and we'll go exploring some more and we'll do some things and I should be able to have better setup and then we'll start decorating this weekend and we'll start getting some vendors up so we need to figure out what we want to do exactly how do we want to set this up so that we get people to visit anyway I'll put the link up in the next video where there's actually something to watch and actually something where you can come in and see and then you can come visit and that would be awesome but for right now I'm gonna call it quits for tonight and I'm going to sleep because I gotta tag this and upload it and put this end cards on it and everything and that's gonna take me a minute and we will uh, see how that goes but I will talk to you guys later thanks for watching I hope you're enjoying me getting back into Star Wars Galaxies and uh, Hopefully this wasn't too horrible to watch, even at the decreased resolution and the slightly lower frame rate than usual. Uh, new PC should be up someday, and when it is, then uh, we'll be happy. But I'm not rushing it, and I'm not going to settle. So look forward to what I get in the end, but please bear with me in the interim while we're putting it together. Till then, I'll see you guys later. I'll be back over the weekend, probably tomorrow, to do more of this. And that'll be fun. All our crafters are in one building already. So that worked out better than I thought. So, good for us. Anyway, see you guys.